welcome or welcome back to Ina Nits. My name is Ina, I come from Norway and here it's all about knitting, which means knitting projects, things that I have on my needles, finished objects. I talk about yarn and plants and this time I'm also going to give a short summary of what I knitted in January. I plan to come back to that segment towards the end of this episode. I have been finishing three projects since we last spoke. And I am so happy to report that I'm still eagerly working on older whips to try and tackle them and get them finished. I started 2024 with 21 unfinished projects on my needles and now I'm down to 14, which I think is pretty good. It's one third out of the way and um, I will still be continuing working on getting that number down. Uh, which feels really nice and both to like just get things done I guess and um, it's probably a better feeling for me to cast on new things when I know that I have accomplished to finish some older whips as well or first yeah but I think that we We'll just dive in and I will show you what I have been finishing since last time. First of all, I have a new pair of Christmas socks. So these is made out of a Christmas yarn. It is from Hobby and I think the yarn is called Christmas socks basically and um, it is a sparkly colorway and um, the color is 03 so it's just a self stri striping yarn with four colors and yeah I really like them I haven't made them match perfectly I think that it is pretty fun when it's almost similar, but not quite. Then it top down. I did a two by two ribbing and I did as I do for almost all of my socks, a heel flap and heel turn and guess a decrease. So what I did to to ensure that the striping sequence continued all the way down the sock was to knit the heel flap and the heel turn and then I wound off uh, quite a, a piece of the yarn uh, until the, um, it started on the next color um, in the sequence basically. So I think these turned out really pretty and now they're going into my, my box of Christmas socks. So they will stay there until December when I can start wearing them. So these will be my 11th pair of Christmas socks, which is so fun. I got this yarn as a present through an advent yarn swap with Antove. She lives in Norway and uh, we uh, gifted each other four advent gifts and um, this pretty glittery Christmas yarn was one of the gifts I received from her. So one sock pair done and then I completed my cozy higgy socks and yeah I had um, 
and it's long going in January for my own pattern, the cozy higgy socks. And um, so many of you have purchased the pattern and shared about your sock knitting and um, given it a lovely review. I thank you so, so much. It was a treat to see all of your beautiful socks grow. And um, yeah, I enjoyed it immensely. Um, so thank you for all of the tags. I um, completed this pair in January to participate in my own knit along. And uh, as I probably told you last time, these will be a um, gift to my youngest daughter. She has the exact same shoe size as myself. So, uh, yeah, I basically just knit my socks as I would if I were to have them myself. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this pair is knit with two strands of fingering weight yarn and I have held one strand of uh, Sana Sisu in a peachy color together with some leftovers and scraps. Um, for the leg I have used a Knit Picks Felici. It's a self-striping yarn uh, in some very pale pastel colors. And for the heel and the rest of the foot, I have used various just random um, scraps in kind of purples and really dark pinks and some very variegated yarns as well. So, yeah, I really enjoy knitting these and they fly by really quickly. Uh, I knit them on 3.5 millimeter needles. And I think it's a combination of the ribbed pattern and the fact that I use two strands of thinner sock wool that just makes the, the fabric extra squishy and yeah, lovely. So there will be more of these in my future for sure. <laughs> Very happy with them. The third project I have finished since last time is a pair of mittens. So this was a project that was one of my uh, UFOs from previous years. I think I cast it on the first mitten back in 2020 or 2021. And it was meant to be uh, just a side project uh, that I could pick up and work on in between other things. Um, but didn't turn out as a quick project at all because I totally forgot about it and it has been lingering for way too long. So I decided to pick it up and start working on it. I think that I picked it up February 1st and finished the pair in two days. So yeah. It is a quick project, but of course it's, it is not knitting itself. Uh, the pattern is from the book called Strikt til Nøstebarn by Katrine Gregersen. This is a Norwegian knitting pattern book. I have used it so much. There are mainly patterns for children in here, so I have knitted quite a lot from this book while my kids were smaller. Uh, nowadays I only kind of use the pattern for these mittens. Tova Votter is the Norwegian words for um, felted mittens. This is the um, 
pattern number 1916. And I know for sure that um, on Ravelry, these patterns from the book, or most of them at least, are available. However, I'm not sure if there is an English translation of the pattern available. But it is a very nice um, pattern for felted mittens. I have knitted many of these over the years. Uh, the pattern includes um, sizes from baby, toddler to um, up to adults. And it's knitted with two strands of thinner wool. And of course it needs to be like um, pure wool and not super wash treated in order to be able to felt it. So yeah, this is how they look. And I have been felting them two times. I am felting in my washer. And I have found in my washer I have a very short cycle. It's 15 minutes, like a speed wash cycle. And um, then I put it on 30 degrees Celsius and on 15 minutes. So I try that first with another pair of mittens that I have felted earlier and been using for a long time and they were kind of in the need of another round of felting because they were a little bit sloppy and I would like the fabric to be a little bit denser. So I put them in together with this pair and did one cycle. Um, uh, the older pair of mittens were perfect after that round but uh, this pair needed another round so round two i did the same program but i put them in together with a pair of socks of superwash wool uh, just to make it felt better you know there's um with more items in the washer the items will felt more or better. So this is the result after the second round of felting in the washer. I still think, however, that the, the fabric could be even more dense or tight. Um, so they might go in the washer a third time. Um, but I haven't really decided if I'm going to keep these mittens myself or if they will become a gift for somebody. So I'm holding back the third round in the washer until I have decided on that. Um, because if the recipient of the mittens have uh, slightly bigger hands than I do, these might be perfect. So yeah. Um, they might go into the gift basket or they might become my own mittens. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but the mittens are done. And I am so, so happy with how they turned out. And to have a new UFO of the needles. It feels great. Just briefly going to show you the yarns. They are knit with one strand of this petrol color. It's from Texriana. It is a Latvian pure wool. And this one is an old skein of, or ball, of uh, Kauni. Kauni. So yeah, I really like the marled color. So 
So that was the three items that I have completed since last time. Um, I have, though, made quite some progress on the Damiaka Loppa. I think that I was basically finished with the body and sleeve number one and worked on sleeve number two last time we spoke. Now sleeve number two is finished and I have given this cardigan a good wash and block just to even out everything before I do the stick. Um, and uh, knit the button bands. So that's everything that remains to get this oldie but goldie cardigan of the needles, which is pretty crazy. Um, my plan is to complete the stick and at least get the button band started this week. So fingers crossed, but I, I think that's very doable. Um, right. I think I will hold off talking more about the Damiakolokpa until next time. I have started one new bigger project. I know that I have talked about before that I wanted to hold off any new bigger project until I had some off my needles. But uh, at the other hand, this is a sweater that Christian, my partner, really, really, really wanted and has been asking for a lot. And... I have been tackling quite a few UFOs in January, so I figured, why not? And boy, oh boy, what a project. It is large. Um, this is the Northland sweater by Petite Knit. And so the thing is that Christian, he bought the yarn for this sweater when we were in Florence, Italy, on our fall break and yeah so we visited a lovely yarn shop there and he found this tweedy yarn it's made by rico design and we thought originally that it this was an italian yarn because it's made in italy uh, however one lovely viewer informed me that Rico Design is in fact a German yarn brand. So, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> it was bought in Italy and he have been wanting a Tweedy sweater so long. And he is very much into blue. So when he found this yarn with the very pretty blue tweedy effects. No, the blue color, but a lot of colors in the tweed flexes. We just knew that this was the yarn that was going to be his tweedy sweater. Um, we have been browsing for patterns for a long time, actually. He was a little bit on the fence about what he actually wanted. I tried to encourage him to go for a 
you know, cable sweater or something with a little bit more texture. Uh, but in the end, he went for a very plain raglan, like pullover style sweater. Um, and the Northland sweater by Petitny just fit the bill. Um, so I have done one modification, and that is the uh, turtleneck. This is not according to the pattern, but I basically just did a 2x2 two two rib instead of the 1x1 one one rib, um, which is the color in the pattern. And the color is quite like it's, um, uh, what do you call it? Crew neck. That's the, 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 the color in the pattern. But he wanted a turtleneck. So then I think that a turtleneck might look better in 2x2 two two rib instead of 1x1. One one. So that's what I went for. And he just followed along as I knitted and he decided upon the length of the turtleneck. He really wanted a um, folded down neck like this without the um, upper part of the turtleneck being too high up. And he also wanted it to be convenient to unfold it and wear the sweater like this if it was particularly cold so that's why it is like not too high and it can still be folded and look pretty and we have checked and double checked and the neck opening and the collar is very stretchy and wide without being like too sloppy so it seems like it's going to be a, a good fit. So the sweater itself is worked top down. So you start at this or behind. You work back and forth uh, um, on the neck part first. Um, so I, this is actually the latest part of the pattern, but I wanted to knit the um, turtleneck just to Make sure that I got it right. It got a super construction. It's kind of a saddle shoulder construction that uh, goes into a raglan increase. It's very pretty constructed and it seems like it's going to be a very good fit. Um, yeah. This is, of course, not the pattern that the pattern, uh, no, sorry, this is not the yarn that the pattern is written for. And I don't know if you can see, but it's a very unevenly spun yarn. It's a little bit thinner here and there and some thicker and um, there are quite a few of these like small bits that just pops out of the yarn, which makes it, I don't know, a little bit tricky to knit up. And I had to go down one whole needle size from like five millimeter needles was the recommended needle in the pattern. But in order to meet gauge, I had to go down to a four millimeter needle. And even then, I am one stitch away to, of meeting gauge. But I, I calculated and found out that it would be okay to knit the size large and get the correct circumference of the sweater. But it's something about, you know, when you have to knit with a smaller needle and the yarn is a little bit, I don't know, you have to kind of check quite often to sh make sure that uh, the stitches look okay. And yeah, it's not a very smooth knit. So I'm a little bit, I don't know, drawn. Uh, on one hand, I would 
love to get this finished as quickly as possible. Uh, but on the other hand, I have to be super mindful not to work on it too long at a time. Because it's hurting my back and my neck quite uh, fast. So my strategy right now is to do like maybe five centimeters, two inches every day or every other day. And then knit on other things in between because um, otherwise this sweater would kill both my neck and my knitting mojo. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, it is going to be a pretty sweater, I can tell. And I also am in love with all of these uh, beautiful spots of the Tweedy yarn. Uh, but uh, there, there are so many other things I would rather knit on. But I'm very determined not to let this become a UFO. It will. I will work on this until it is finished and hopefully Christian will love it and I can just consider it done. <laughs> so yeah. I think that was all I wanted to say. Yeah. I think I have another 20 centimeters or more left of the body. And then, of course, I have to work both arms. But we have more than enough yarn, so... It will be okay. I just have to make sure that I am not losing steam on this. Right. I have something very funny or very fun on my needles as well. So in this bag that Marilisa of Spool Stories sewed me for um, our little uh, yarny advent swap that we did in December, um, I was gifted 24 like 10 grams minis of uh, fingering weight sock yarn in all of the beautiful colors. And if you watched my previous or maybe the episode before that, um, you will have seen that I knitted um, Simply Scrappy Curious, Simply Curious Scrappy Cowl. Sim yeah. By Helen Stewart out of those minutes. However, I have quite a lot of yarn left over from that project. And uh, my thought was, of course, to knit a pair of scrappy socks. So that is what I have on my needles. And this is so fun to work on. It is knitting up so fast. I, I can't really get enough of scrappy socks. I just, I love it so, so dearly. Um, I have chosen to knit every stripe 10 rounds. So 10 rounds of every color. And uh, except for the cuff, which is 20 rounds with the same color, and for the heel flap and heel turn, which is also the same color. And I will probably do the toe in one color too. And I'm not intending this pair to match at all. So the, the next sock will have a totally different heel flap and the uh, cuff and the colors of the stripes will not be in the same order. So I think that I might, I will have a, enough yarn for a pair for sure and 
perhaps I will have enough for three single socks. So if I do, I will create three single socks and then I will just use them as a pair, but I will rotate the three single socks as the same pair, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and in that way, they will last a little bit longer. And if in the future I find that I want to knit another pair of these socks using some other yarn, it wouldn't be a problem to pair that sock up with one of the socks from this pair, which has have three, which has three single socks. <laughs> okay, so I hope you understand what I mean. But I just love making beautiful things out of scraps. That is one of my greatest passions. And I think when you can just mix and match all the colors like you do in a scrappy sock. Uh, it's so, it's just self-motivating all the time. I could just knit on this sock forever, I think. And watch all of the beautiful colors go together. Gives me so much. I love it. So this sock is a 64 stitch sock and I'm doing a 2x2 two two rib and I'm knitting them on 2.25 millimeter needles using magic loop. Right, um, I have two more things to show you. I could just briefly first show you uh, the beginning of sock number two of this pair, which is um, a sock that I started back in October when I had my Octo Socktober month of almost only knitting socks. <laughs> um, the brown yarn is an um, Arevetta from Filcolana and the um, Multicolored is a crazy silver ball. I don't have the ball band right here. I only have the rest of the ball. I just thought that the brown, brown matched the purple color so much. And the pair will become a pretty one for sure. They will probably be for me. And I have another mitten finished, or a pair of mitten finished. I have posted the whole process of those mittens on my Patreon. Um, these are mittens that I designed myself. Mm, they are made with plain white, and then I have hand dyed some pure wool in three different colors and um, I've done a pattern on the cuff on the, and on the rest of the mitten using these three colors and I think they turned out so great and um, I'm going to write up the pattern and doing a couple of smaller modifications before I do, and I will knit them up again. Uh, so I'm not going to show you the, the mittens right now, but um, I will be in need of test knitters for those mittens. They are a pretty quick knit on five millimeter needles. So if you're interested in a test knit starting approximately on February 15th, um, please let me know and um, yeah, that would be great. I have one extra project to talk about. And this was one of my rips from back then. Um, I I showed you 
a pair of socks in my Whips and UFOs special episode in January. And these were a, a pair of socks that I call the Balloon Girl socks. They were knit uh, using intarsia technique and had many, many balloons and then a balloon girl, that a little girl that kind of uh, flew after these balloons or was holding all of the balloons with one hand. Um, the problem was that I did something wrong. Um, the heel was terrible, didn't fit at all. So even though the balloons and the balloon girl was pretty, um, I had absolutely no desire to finish the, that pair at all. I didn't like them. And um, it just gave me <laughs> really bad vibes. So, uh, yeah, basically after the struggle of trying to get it right the first time. I have one lovely lady, and I'm so sorry, but I can't remember your name. But she suggested that I... Um, made the socks into a pair of wrist warmers and I was a little bit on the fence about that because I'm not a big user of wrist warmers myself but sometimes they are very handy um, and considering that these socks were knit uh, in intarsia, which is a really hard project to rip out. You use so many threads and they go in all directions and it just created a big time goal to try and undo or rip back the socks when I tried. So basically, what I did, as suggested by this wonderful viewer was to rip back the sock up to above the heel and then do a ribbing and make them into a wrist warmer like that. So I did. And I'm very, very, very happy I did it because they fit great. And yeah, I've just started the um, ribbing on the other one. And <laughs> as you can see, I have probably 100 loose ends to weave in afterwards. Like, like so. But I just have to find a lovely program to watch on TV or a, a knitting podcast on YouTube and get it going. And my plan is to keep them myself. I will give them a good wash and block to even out this pattern of the balloons. So the balloon girl is no longer present. I had to rip her out, but the balloon balloons are still there. And I will use this as office wrist warmers. Yeah, well, I will either keep them in my um, in my office at work, or I will uh, keep them in my. Um, home office as wrist warmers. So yeah, great idea. Thank you so much for suggesting this. I would never thought of it myself. And I think they work out great. And you know, when I'm wearing a sweater like this with three quarter length sleeves, it is great to have something on that um, warms up the area from your like mid underarm and over your wrists 
I have forgotten to tell you the sweater I'm wearing today. So this is an oldie but goldie favorite of mine. It is called Tara of Tara. It is a pattern by Arnhild Skat Weitz. She's a Norwegian knitting designer. I will link to the pattern in the description box below. So lastly, I wanted to show you my notes. I have been very good at taking notes on my projects since 1st of January. And I have made myself a goal for 2024 or a wish list, wish list on things that I really want to knit. And the first sweater on this a list is the porcelain sweater by Lena Holme Samsø. I have promised myself not to cast on this sweater until after I have finished um, Dame och Loppa. But when that is done, I'm going to knit uh, a beautiful sweater with these yarns. These have been in my stash for quite some time. I bought it while I visited Edinburgh Yarn Festival in 2017. It is Easy Knits, which is a British yarn brand. I am not sure this is a yarn that's still available, but um, the base is called Big Boy and it is made purely out of UK wool so x more blue face and it is 150 grams per 500 meters so it would be a little bit thicker than fingering weight so around sport weight and i have been dreaming about a um, porcelain sweater in these two yarns so this very light gray combined with this absolutely beautiful red. It is a little bit like raspberry red, but also wine red. I don't know. It's a very rich and deep uh, um, bluish red. Um, yeah, I have been wanting the porcelain sweater for a long time. Um, however, Lena Holme Samsø recently came out with a new sweater design, the terracotta sweater. And now I have convinced myself to do the terracotta sweater instead of the porcelain sweater. <laughs> I love the fact that she has combined stranded color work with some structure in the pattern. I think it's so pretty. Uh, so yeah, that's my plan. And hopefully it can be casted on next week. That would be absolutely great. And then to the brief summary of January. Ladies and gentlemen, I finished a total of eight projects in January and I knitted 1033 grams of yarn, which is great. And I, in this uh, summary, I have not taken uh, the Ridari, the Let Loopy uh, yarn sweater that I finished in January, which was a very long term uh, UFO because I didn't actually knit on it in January. I just completed it. So I did the underarm seams and fastened and trimmed all of the ends. So I found it a little bit cheaty to include that number of 520 gram into my monthly summary 
Um, yeah, so I knitted a little bit over a kilo gram of yarn and not including that ridway, if you know what I mean. But it is included in the total number of finished projects, which was eight. I got 100 grams of yarn into my stash. So this is a new yarn, which is uh, from Fru Fjellman. She's a Swedish indie dyer, and she has a secret monthly subscription. And this was the yarn for February 2024 on her merino sock base, and it is called Disco. So pretty. And she always includes a stitch marker and some goodies. It will probably become a lovely pair of socks. Yeah. So I knitted four pairs, pairs of socks in January. I knitted two sweaters or pullovers. Two, one pair of mittens, one cowl and one hat. I think it's so fun to be able to like summarize my month of knitting for myself and for you. So I hope you like like this segment. <laughs> I'll try to keep up with it for the entire year. Right. That was all that I wanted to share with you. I hope you found some inspiration and that you have been enjoying my little chatty episode with you. I've been drinking some tea and <clears throat> I am now looking forward to pick up my needles and continue knitting. I will probably pick up my scrappy socks and finish that first sock. And yeah, again, thank you so much if you have purchased my pattern, the Cozy Higgy Socks. And if you knitted away on those through January, I um, <clears throat> have drawn a winner of that knit along. I don't know, remember if I talked you, told you that. The winner was uh, Anna, Anna Mylen. She's a Norwegian woman living in Sweden. <clears throat> and I gifted her a skein of my hand dyed yarn. So that's on its way to her. And yeah, I uh, come join my Patreon if you're interested in a little bit more of uh, um, behind the scenes and um, some insights that I don't share on the YouTube channel. I have just uh, started a new segment called Friday chat and knit. That seemed to be a welcomed segment. I hope to see you over there or here on my next episode. And thank you so much for being here. And uh, please leave a like and a comment and become a subscriber if you're not already. Take care, happy knitting, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.